Good morning, Reality Fam, and welcome to Church Online. We might be watching this in our own living rooms or wherever it is that you're watching this, but we are still gathered together as a community, and that is pretty awesome. If you're joining us for the very first time this morning, very special welcome. It's so awesome to have you here. Uh, a link is going to pop up in the chat. Let us know that you're here. Um, it's just we're very grateful that you are spending this morning with us. And right now, we're going to spend the next 60 seconds. Everyone jump in the chat and say hello to someone. And uh, we'll see you right after that. It's so awesome to see everyone jumping in on that chat and connecting, but get ready because we are in for a cracking morning ahead. We have Pastor Dan interviewing a very, very special guest, Pete Christensen. Now that name will be very familiar to a lot of you because Pete is such a great friend of reality and he has ministered to our family many, many times. Uh, but for those of you who don't know, Pete is just this incredible leader within our city and it's such a blessing to have him join us this morning. And I for one cannot wait to hear what he has to say. But right now, we're gonna enter in a time of worship. Um, so I encourage you to uh, just dim the lights, uh, calm the mood, settle the kids, and just get ready to enter into the presence of God and spend some time uh, proclaiming Him. So let's pray. Father, we just love you and we are so thankful that we get to gather uh, together at home, that we get to gather with our family and we get to enjoy um, lifting your name and we get to enjoy just worshipping you together. And I just ask that you just saturate every single household with your presence, uh, that, that, that everyone's awareness of, of you uh, and, and what you're doing in their family, what you're doing in their house um, is just amplified as we, as we just uh, sing out your praises. In Jesus' name, amen. He's the God of victory and the God of breakthrough. There's nothing that he can't do. He's so worthy of all our praises. So we're giving it all to him this morning. Breakthroughs on our side. 
you, we praise you This is what living looks like This is what freedom feels like This is what heaven sounds like We praise you, we praise you This is what living looks like
place I would rather be No place I would rather be And here in your love, here in your love So set a fire down in my soul That I can't protect and I can't control I want more of you, God I want more of you, God Set a fire down in my soul That I can't protect and I can't control I want more of you, God I want more of you, God Set a fire down in my soul That I can't protect, that I can't control I want more of you, God I want more of you, God Set a fire down in my soul That I can't protect, that I can't control If I live 
touch, let it go, set a blaze, uncontrolled, I want that fire, I want that fire, so light a match, let it go, set a blaze, uncontrolled, I Pete, so good to have you here with us, man, for Reality Church Online. And um, massive thank you for joining us for this conversation. So excited, mate. It's and good to be with Dan and it's good to be with Reality Church. Big yeah. hi to, hey, to everyone out there. all the family. Yeah, looking yeah. forward to um, this session together and uh, yeah. I'm excited. It's good, man. We're excited. Excited to have you. Yeah. Always a privilege and an honor to hang out with you, bro. Likewise. So thank you for being here. Likewise. <laughs> I know they left you hanging then. <laughs> uh, you always did. You always did. <laughs> But um, hey, just for anyone that may not know you like super well in our church, yeah. um, it'd be cool if you wanted to share a little bit about yourself and your ministry and fam and, you know. Yeah, look, I've been married to a crazy, beautiful wife for <laughs> nearly 30 years. Yep. Actually, September will be 30 years wow. and um, she's my backbone and we're childhood sweethearts and so good. have done everything together and continue to do everything together. So um she sends a greeting to everyone, by the way, as well. Yay, Christine, if you're watching. We love yeah. you, Christine. <laughs> um, I have um, two beautiful children, uh, Brooke, who is on her way to 19, and Ben, who is on his way to 16. Wow, man. So, That's amazing. Yeah. So we've been in ministry. Actually, we got married and went straight into ministry. So just short of 30 years of ministry. Wow. Um, during that 30-year period, we've done 14 years itinerating. So there was a period there where we were traveling to at least 12 nations a year mm. and semi-based out of uh, Singapore for three months of the year. Mm. Actually, we wow. stayed where Ron Hunt Bonke would park himself while he was in Singapore. And so <laughs> I'd always huge. do the, the thing. I'd jump into the bed and kind of get that anointing. And, <laughs> and, uh, Go and catch something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah wow. So that was good. So, yeah, over the years, well, nearly 30 years of ministry, uh, we've done a lot of things mm. uh, from – itinerant, we went into a church planting mode and building cross-culturally. So wow. we planted churches here and also in um, Cambodia. So one church in Cambodia went uh, to 22 churches. Wow. We started That's businesses huge. and we started um, a primary school, high school. They're all still going and still That's functioning amazing. really well. So they were my highlight years. Working yeah. in Cambodia was like, for me personally, my um, – uh, Bible school. It mm. taught me so much. Wow. Building cross culturally taught me about the kingdom of God, and um, you know, in 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 a third world country, um, it either works or it doesn't. Right. And yeah. you get to test your yeah. your, your theology. Yeah. That's and huge. so, um, yeah. yeah. Look, it it's been a great journey. The last uh, four or five years, we're back 
kind of building trends locally. I'm, I'm myself migrating into um, uh, consulting to churches, yeah, yeah. Uh, coaching people, coaching churches. That's awesome. Um, and also working out in the marketplace as well. So, so cool, man. Um, what a wealth of experience and, um, you know, yeah. So much stuff. I'm sure so much you've learned along the way. Yeah, you're still here, man. I'm still here. I'm still you're in still, love. You still got. You're still married. You're still in love. Still love you're the Lord. Still loving Jesus. Yeah. Still loving His church. Yeah. And uh, I just want to say a huge thank you for all the input and impact you've had in my life and in Brooke's life Thanks, and, and into Reality's life through yeah. the years. And you've been, you and Christine have both been a huge blessing to to our awesome. lives. And so, um, you're yeah, such a privilege to be able to hang out and talk and. You know, um, this kind of came about because um, a few weeks ago, or probably a month ago now, you and I had coffee and, yeah. and we were talking about, um, you know, this idea of like, you know, looking after yourself and, and self-care and how to look after the whole person, yeah. not just your spiritual life or not just career life or whatever, but the yeah, fact yeah. that we're holistically, we need to understand ourselves like spirit, soul, body. Yeah. We need to understand how we work and how we tick and so... Um, you know, we, you shared some incredible gold and some wisdom there that I personally was like, wow, I need to know more about this. And I really wanted to be out, our church to be able to hear some of this stuff. Yeah. And so, um, so today I'm just so excited that we get to dive into that. And yeah. um, so maybe we could start by you just kind of giving us a bit of an overview of what self-care is all about as we, sure. as we set the table for this chat. Yeah. Here we go. About Let's to take it. off. Let's go. <laughs> We're on the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. The first thing that comes to mind is a quote from Mother Teresa. She once said that if you want to keep a lamp burning, mm. you've got to keep putting oil in it. Wow. Or to paraphrase that, it won't keep burning mm. uh, unless you care for it. And so we'll or put it in another way, unless you care for the lamp, its light is going to slowly diminish. Mm. And I think that there is, in this time, in this age that we're in right now, there are truckloads of people out there right now that they're, they've lost their shine wow. and they've lost that brightness that they once had. And uh, the pace of life is totally different for this generation. Generation Z, uh, the millennials, uh, are born into a totally different demographic time and pace of life, mm, you know, from yeah. when I was born and my parents were born. So different. But I meet a lot of people who are just struggling to keep their lamp burning. And um, I think there's been a stigma going back in my generation where self-care was kind of looked upon as being selfish, mm, uh, but it's totally right. the opposite. Yeah. You know, so the greatest gift you and I can give uh, our family uh, lead the people we're leading church work mm. is our own healthy soul. Wow! And uh, for that to happen, we have to be aware of who we are, mm. the way we've been fearfully and wonderfully made. And if we don't, our oil is going to run out down the track. Some of the stats that I've read recently is that they reckon eighty percent of family breakups. Um, divorces could have been prevented if self care was practiced. Wow, that's a huge. You think about that huge number. That's crazy. If there was an awareness of self-care. Mm. I mean, it, when I was born, the first kind of 30 years of my life, I wasn't aware of self-care. Yeah. You know, there was one mode, one mm. speed, on. one gear, <laughs> and it was just Hard. go. Go for it. Yeah. 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 And so wow. really what self-care is, um, it can be defined in different ways. But simply put, it's being responsible for and caring for mm. your own mind, mm. your own soul, Right. And your own emotions. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, there's layers to that, which I'm sure we'll touch on in, in a moment. Yeah. But it's looking to care for those areas. And it's so important as believers that we understand some of those intricacies of who we are, how mm. we're constructed, how we're fearfully and wonderfully made. In fact, I think it's Mark 12, 30, Jesus said, you know, you know, in light of the Ten Commandments, here's the shift. Here's mm. how I want you to live. And conduct yourself. I want you to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mm. with all your soul, and with all your mind. And I want you to love your neighbor the yeah. same way you love yourself. Right. So he referred um, that to the interior space, mm. yeah. to the mind, yeah. to the soul, and to the emotions. So he said, if you're going to relate to God, these platforms have to be a healthy filter. Mm. If you're going to relate to your neighbor and you're going to love your neighbor, mm. 
Mm. You've got to have a healthy mind. Right. You've got to have a he- healthy emotions and soul. Yeah. Um, and it stems back to learning self-care. Yeah, right. If you can love yourself, you can love your neighbour. So good. And I've been in a space as I've counselled and ministered to many people over the years, pastors, leaders, that weren't able to do that when mm. they were burnt out. Yeah. Weren't able to do that. If you're fractured and you're mm. depressed, you're struggling with constant anxiety, you can't minister and love yeah, your neighbour. Absolutely. So what God wants us to do is to come back and not see self-care as being selfish, mm. but as actually wisdom Yeah. so that we can present ourselves. We can present our own soul as being healthy in whatever context we're called to lead, uh, family life, et cetera, et cetera. Back to those figures, 80% of breakups could have been avoided if self-care was part of their their family life practice. It's pretty pretty amazing. <sighs> yeah, yeah, it's... Um... It's pretty staggering to think that yeah. you know this just this one shift yep. could have that much yep. impact. So can you list the three things again that you just said? It was healthy looking after your mind, yeah. Healthy Take mind. Take care of your mind. Healthy soul. Healthy soul. And healthy, healthy emotion. emotions. So prioritizing the care. The so self-care could be summed up. Prioritizing the care of, of of the mind, of the soul, the emotions. Yep. Yep. Wow. And and often, hmm, often we take care of a lot of other stuff, right? Yeah. But we we some for some reason we, we we can put those things to the back burner or not prioritize them. Yeah, look, I think once again coming back to my my yeah. generation earlier in the seventies, eighties, and nineties, and some of you that are as old as me, you, you'd understand this. There was a, a full on focus and an emphasis on the spirit and being spiritual. Mm, yeah, and I think you know, hats off, that's fantastic. I was. Uh, swimming in yeah. the, the teachings of Watchman Nee, which was primarily all about the spirit. And uh, we were taught in those days to be walking in the spirit is to <laughs> not be in the flesh. And uh, there was an overemphasis of of that. And I think uh, that's one part. It's, an, mm. it's a key part to our life. It's a key part to a healthy life. Mm. But we missed out on the whole. Yeah. Um, for me to go to the gym or to be aware of and conscious of getting fit, being healthy, uh, you know, separating myself to get out in uh, the ocean, swimming, surfing, yeah. all the things I love to do. I kind of dropped that for a while right. and it became all about the spirit. It became about praying intently, reading my Bible every day. And they are important disciplines which I continue through to this day. But I've added now wow. from the part to the yeah. whole and I'm feeding and, and ministering to my emotions, my mind and my soul. And so I think what is happening right now in this time is that God is uh, moving us from a dualistic mindset, which kind of sees black, white. Mm. It discriminates against spirit and flesh. And the kingdom, mm. when we look through the kingdom lens, it looks at the whole not right. the part. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, whenever truth is being introduced in the earth, we tend to focus on the part mm. and run with the part and then the balance comes and the other areas we've kind of let go of, they yeah. come back into picture yeah. and into the frame of our understanding. And so that's what's kind of happening now. God and his kingdom is bringing a holistic ministry yeah. back to the earth. That's so good. And, you know, you mentioned one reason why you might have neglected the area of self-care in the past because of an overemphasis on spirituality or prayer or being, you know, super disciplined or yeah. whatever. What what do you is there any other reasons that you see that kind of keep people neglecting and in that space of Yeah, I think the biggest thing is what we're talking about now. There mm. needs to come an awareness. Yeah, awareness. So okay, that's a big one. Yeah. Self awareness yep. is the greatest defense against self deceit. Wow. So when I talk about self, that one down. When, when I talk about yeah. <laughs> when I talk about self deceit, what I'm talking mm. about is being honest with yourself. Yeah, and um, you know when we are honest mm. and we do a self audit mm. about our weaknesses wow. and understand our strengths and weaknesses together, and we really, you know, I think for me, I, I had issues that were underlying, and uh, you know, when you're in your twenties, you can get by. When you're in your 30s, yes. you can kind of get by. But by the time you hit your 40s, mm. some of these things and life experience starts to break open some of these underlying things. So for you 20-year-olds, teenagers, I actually are coaching my kids continually mm. about how to be self-aware, wow. how to self-regulate, how to manage your emotions, your mind, how to uh, frame your understanding around this whole area of self-care. I think that's so important that we that we learn to have a self-awareness because if we can't be aware of ourselves and what, what state we're in, yeah. we're not in touch with our 
emotional state if I'm not aware that I'm that I'm railing or you know like if I'm not if I'm not looking for it right yeah. then I'm not going to be able to tend to it so I think that's that's huge hey it's self aware and an awareness of this like, whole whole concept of self care yeah so I'm so glad that we're talking about it today so that we can we can begin to um you know for some people maybe it's a kind of a first time some people it's maybe a yeah. reminder yeah um but I'm so glad that we can have this conversation because I I agree sometimes there's those things and you've been able to You've been able to kind of push them aside for a while, but there comes a point where you do have to face you have to face yeah. those things, and they will come to the surface at some point, right? Yes, and um, they do. Yeah, life is a funny way of doing it. <laughs> so I got a few questions for you, Pete, um, as we go through. And so first one will be like, with this area of self care, are there any are there any high risk people or categories of people that that really need to pay particular or extra attention? to self-care? Yeah, good question. Um, when I think about answering this question, I think about my wife. She's an empath. Mm. So empaths are on the high risk um, category of, of burnout. Okay. Uh, for, for those of you who don't understand, the nature of an empath is that they take on the feelings. Yes. And, you know, they take on people's problems. They take on um, situations right. and circumstances of those that, those that they love. They're great counsellors, yeah. great shepherds, um, but they can overcare. Yeah, right. And I think empaths have to watch and regulate and manage themselves and, and insert boundaries, particularly those that have a high-level pastoral calling. Mm. The second category, I'd say early childhood trauma. Uh, right. Over the wow. years, both Kristen and I wow. have been exposed to many adults that uh, went through some early childhood trauma that might have been sexual abuse or mm. their upbringing was uh, extreme where it, there was some traumatic event that took place. And once again, that stays under the surface until it can be a tragedy, happens, a death in the family, a divorce, and it all surfaces. So the earlier we can get onto this whole uh, platform of learning how to look after our mind, our emotions and our soul, the better. Mm. Um so Those that have been through divorce it can be high risk. Those that have been through any family death or tragedy. Mm. Uh, I was only talking to a pastor recently where his brother last year got hit by a, a, a drunk driver and was killed instantly. And, you know, we were just kind of um, vibing together and talking about his journey of self-care. He, he wow. said, you know, the, the instant after that, within the first three months, uh, things in his emotions that he wasn't aware were there started to surface. And tragedy and trauma does have uh, a way of bringing to surface mm. these things. Yeah, and so, absolutely. you know, God is not after perfection and, and mm. certainly self-care is not, um, you know, the end result is not perfection, mm. but it's help us. It's helping us get through life's challenges better, mm. you know. So when you look at jobs such as nurses, yep. those that are working in ED, uh, pastors, um, you know, they're high, they're high risk. Um, ambulance drivers, um, nurses particularly, and teachers, um, social social workers. Mm, Actually, seventy five percent of all social workers have gone through some form of burnout. Wow. Any job where you've got to live with the pressure of being on all the time. Mm. Um, I was only talking to a a heart surgeon last week, and um, <laughs> I said, "How do you manage this pressure of of the intricacy?" The the, the micro level of, of operating on someone, their life in your hands. And, he, Can't even imagine. and he, he defaulted straight back. He said, you've got to create space for you to detox, for you to regulate your emotions, wow. um, yep. strong meditation, lifestyle of, 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 of you know, fun and, and uh, to balance out the pressure. And, um, yeah, I learned a, a lot just from talking to him. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty always on type yeah. of role, right? When you're dealing 100%. with somebody's brain. Uh, yeah, that's right. pretty intense. Yeah. Um, so that's great. There's some great categories. Um, yeah. and, and I know even for me, just even, even moving into the phase of parenting, um, you know, we've been there for 10 years now, but it, it kind of starts off, to be honest, pretty, pretty easy and very task focused because you're doing a lot of, you're doing the nappies, you're doing the thing. Yeah. You're losing sleep and everything, but it's like, you're doing a lot of jobs for your kids. As they get older, now it's a lot more emotional. Now it's a, mo a lot more relational. So yeah. the, the demands are now not as, there are tasks, but there's also now this other layer that's there. Yeah. And I've, I've found that like, wow, that's been, I've realized, man, um, 
now I've got two other little lives that need a lot more of me. Yeah. And so even the journey of parenting, like. So how did you manage? How I manage that? Let's say the first, your first child, the first mm. two years, it kind of hits your head. Yeah, and like I said, it's the I think it's the fact that now you've just got all these extra jobs to do, yeah. you know, and 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 that can make you that can hit you in your soul and your mind mm. and your emotions for sure. Um, but what I, what I really noticed the shift of where I needed to be way more um, aware of my own self care yep. was when you know when my kids are getting a little bit, a little bit older, so so they're they're having conversations with me, they're asking me a lot more questions. There's um, there's a higher level now of like um, relational need. And so I'm, I'm like, man, I need to be right. I need to be healthy on the inside yeah. of my, in my soul and emotions. Love it. You can change a nappy even if you're feeling pretty low and, and crappy. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah. it, it's not too, like you can kind of just get to it, get it done. And But when they're like wanting to talk to you about something and, and, and you're like just, you, you can't engage because you're, you're yeah. tired in your soul, you're tired in your emotions. It, they they know. Yeah. And they're like, hey, you're not listening to me. Yeah. <laughs> Why aren't you listening to me? I was just. Yeah. No, no, I, I am. It's like, but I just became in that phase. I became way more aware of like, oh, I need to, I need to keep this area in check. Yeah, at a whole new level now. So parents are, would be in that category, right? Of yeah. like, yeah. you know, parenting is a is a is a is a category that um, we need to pay t- extra careful attention to, right? Yeah, yeah. So Pete, for you, I mean, over this rich journey of yours and lots of experience that you've had, have you ever had a rock bottom moment? Um, in your life and like a burnout moment and what and what did you learn? Yeah, well, um, I'm smiling now. And because... what did your recovery look like? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> smiling as, now. Has as we say in Australia, the... mate. <laughs> <laughs> you open a can of worms. Yeah, yeah, look, yeah. Uh, I think going back to 2011, uh, there was a domino effect, meaning that there were certain uh, situations and circumstances that unfolded. Mm. I'd been on a 10-year story intense ministry cycle, um, church planning, building cross-culturally, doing uh, ministry in Nepal, Cambodia, got budgets in both nations locally. There was a lot wow. I was handling. A and uh, a mistake I made was I'd have a week break, but it takes a week for you as a pastor or a leader to kind of detox. And I think over 10 years I would have probably – three weekly breaks in a year, which was just stupid when I think about it now. But I was very task orientated and (laughs) driven to accomplish stuff, you know. So um, this wasn't God, what I'm about to share with you wasn't God sent. It was a lack of understanding uh, myself. And Mm. um, by 2012, I had uh, a year from hell. Um, In February, I had to go get uh, four wisdom teeth out and – Due to my past days, uh, my carnal days, I got king hit one time and I had that eye tooth moved and the roots died. So wow. I had five teeth in one sitting that had to be taken out. I woke up halfway through uh, the fourth one being taken out and still had to Ooh. have the, the last one taken out. So wow. um, I, was in, oh, I was in agony. Anyway, um, those dentists out there understand the term dry socket. Um, after a tooth is removed, um, a natural membrane starts to form over, well, it should form over the socket right. um, where the tooth has been removed. Um, so you don't suck through a straw because it can break it. And yeah. Um, yeah. somehow all five membranes uh, broke and it, they all got infected. Wow. Long story short, uh, I went through three months where I, I uh, my lungs got infected, my mouth got infected. I had 27 injections Over that three-month period, I was on antibiotics, lost 12 kilograms of weight, um, was really chronically ill, but it depleted my system. And then a month later, uh, leaders that that we were grooming to take over uh, and oversee some of the works, um, they had their second child and unfortunately she died 20 minutes after birth and um, it kind of rocked their world and we went into... Um, you know, pastoral mode, caring for them, mm. uh, funeral, et cetera, et cetera. And I just noticed I was struggling around this point. And then um, the guys were in our church that were being groomed up to follow along and shadow them. Uh, their business broke down and um, uh, this one individual, the wife, had a nervous breakdown. So we're kind of micromanaging that situation. Um, this is all just all happening at, all once. Happening at once. Wow. Um, then, you know, we're kind of getting through that. Six weeks later, I at 11 o'clock at night, I'll never forget it, I got a phone call 
uh, from the hospital saying that um, my brother had been in a car accident and um, his wife, Kerry, was killed uh, by a drunk driver and uh, my brother had been crushed and they said, look, you need to come in. We doubt he'll last um, six or seven hours. So, you know, I got in the car and drove in and, um, yeah, he was in a bad state and I, I actually uh, kind of went into shock when I saw him physically. Um, mm. He uh, was just hanging on to life. So cutting a long story short, um, he didn't wake up for nearly six months and I was there every day, uh, both in emergency. He was in emergency in that um, intensive uh, care unit there for about a month and then he went into the brain ward section uh, because he suffered acute brain injury. Um, he had five strokes. He severed the main arteries in his neck. So he had um, five strokes. So he's now partially blind and frontal lobe damage. So his personality's altered. So, um, wow. yeah, he's quite deficient. So journeying that first um, hear, six months, um, I went too hard and uh, coupled with, you know, needing a break. Yeah. Uh, this is now October, all what I'd been through that year. Um, by by six months, I was starting to feel completely drained and uh, I just found that I didn't want to wake up. I, I didn't want to go out, um, just felt depleted and numb. And our spiritual father was over at the end of that six-month period and I just sat down with him and cried like a baby one day. I said, Tony, I think I'm burnt out. I think I'm done. And um, I remember... Wow. him cuddling me and whatnot. I just sobbed at the, at the Vines Resort in the foyer there. I just sobbed like a baby. I was just completely shot, done. Um, went back, um, slept all afternoon and, you know, with the expectation, I'll be right. I'll pray myself through this. And it only got worse. Over a period of 12 months, I started to spiral and go down. Um, we were connected with one of the top um, doctors in the area that dealt with hormones, uh, adrenal glands in this area. So I was tested and anyway, the results came back and she said, your adrenal glands are completely fried. Wow. Um, the serotonin level in your brain is the lowest I've actually come across and you're depleted of testosterone to the point where um, I, I now, well, she understood wow. that I, my moods were, I was depressed, you know, mm. I, was, I was in a dark space and it wasn't clinical depression as it right. was, I'd fried my adrenals. Wow. And um, so I had no drive, no motivation. My moods were dark. My outlook on life was dark. And um, I had then started the lesson. It wasn't God sent. Uh, yeah. It was my lack of self-care yes. that brought me to this place. And um uh, I began a three-year journey, a hard journey from rock bottom to wow. slowly have to come out of that. And I tried all manner of prayer and everything I'd learnt, nothing worked. And I remember sometimes I would sit in the car park, you know, just parking my car for one or two hours, just numb and just thinking life as it is, is over. And I had suicidal wow. thoughts. Um, I was dark. Wow. And if it wasn't for a couple of friends that I would call it, early hours of the morning uh, when I had suicidal thoughts. My mind was so dark. I was so depressed and um, just hanging on. And I thank God for uh, these friends. I thank God for my wife who stuck by me. Um, wow. You know, I thank God that I didn't do something stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but my heart goes out to anyone that has struggled through burnout or clinical mm. depression. I understand it. Um I mean, in this time we don't have – this itself could be an interview, you know, of, yeah. of how I had to climb out of it. But in a nutshell, I had to come back to ground zero mm. and I had to simplify my life um, right. and I had to change my diet. I had to get understanding of how my hormones regulate my life, mm. my body. Um, I had to invest in me from a different angle. I had to create space. I had to get around positive people. Um, I had to change my prayer life to one of um, meditation, contemplation, mm. and, and just uh, develop a whole new way of approaching God. And God used it to, to deconstruct a lot of religion out of me <laughs> and reconstruct wow. in me a whole new relationship with him. And so hey, I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy, uh, nor do I want to go through it again. But you know when you're through that dark space when you can look back yeah. and smile and say, I wouldn't have changed a thing. And it's taught wow. me so much. In fact, it's Massive. been 
something that sent me on this trajectory towards coaching people, helping people, uh, being a little bit more better informed about life on a holistic level. And so here we are sitting today where I'm not quoting out of books, I'm quoting out of experience. Yeah. I've been there and, you know, I suppose for the reality of family and anyone that's watching, um, my heart goes out to you. But if you're struggling and holding on right now, you're at that point of like um, wanting to quit life, don't do it. Um, I've been there. It took me three years to climb through those thoughts that were plaguing me. Uh, there were weeks I couldn't sleep. Insomnia was like there all the time. I was fried, wow. but I got through. I got through. And so someone Praise believed in God me. You got through, man. Someone listened to me and someone encouraged me and uh, it was incredible. So that is it in a nutshell. Yeah. But uh, I had to Thank become self aware. Yeah, I had to become yeah. self aware and I had to then put in practice some things that um, uh, were foreign to me. I had to relearn how to do life, I had to be re recalibrated. Wow, no, thank you for sharing that because sometimes sometimes I think people can think like, oh, you know, those preachers and whatever, they've yeah. got all together, but, you know. I was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> but we all go through yes. stuff and we're all human. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, just because someone has a gift to share God's word and to minister to people, yeah. it doesn't make them any stronger or any more invincible or Absolutely. any more immune to the, the hits and knocks of life or to, you know, the circumstances that come. And um, I think... I think it's just, it's, it's so great to share that with us, man. And I'm so glad that God brought you out, you know, and, and now the tools that you've learned through that yeah. to share with others. Um, it's just, it's so good. Thanks. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's massive. Hey, wow. Um, and so what are some red lights and flags um, yeah. in, in a life that's becoming unhealthy or that's headed towards burnout? Obviously, from your own experience, yeah. you you started picking up on some stuff. Can you give us, and even maybe in a more general sense, yeah. like what can people, what like what can I be looking for? What can someone be looking for to say, to know, hey, that's a sign that maybe you need to really yeah. just pause for a minute. Yep. Um, these type of things, you know? Yeah, look, uh, I suppose to use an example, those 17 year olds will understand this. Um, we've all been there and done it. Uh, you get your license at 17 and I had my first car, but I would always drive, you know, the car and I'd wait for the, the uh, fuel light to come on. And uh, it's usually <laughs> around, you've got 50 kilometres left. Yeah, we've all You're been You're laughing, there, yeah. I've done that. I've done that too many times. I'm sure you've been there too. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the light would come on and I think, look, I'll go another 10. And uh, I would always go to the reserves. Yeah, yeah. I've got about twenty dollars in my wallet. That's it <laughs> to get through for the week. And I would drive to you know probably about forty k's left, but I'd keep pushing it, pushing it. I can't remember how many times uh, I would push it to the limit, and I'd end up on the side of the road stuck somewhere. <laughs> I'd call up my dad or yeah. have to get a tow truck a few times. He actually said to me, "No, look, you got to learn your lesson. Get a get a tow truck." Wow. Um, <laughs> I didn't pay Let's attention to the to the uh, low fuel signs, mm. and more more wow. so, I, I think if we can understand this, that there are three fuel tanks that we operate out of: Great. the emotional tank, yep. the mental tank, mm. and the physical tank. Mm. Now, for us New Covenant, you know, uh, New Testament believers, um, I take the belief that uh, my spirit is whole and perfect. Yeah. Um, I'm on a journey unpacking that perfection that Christ has given me, the gift of new creation man, the new breed that I am. I'm unpacking that through and filtering it through the mind, the will, and the emotions. Yep. So, And is that that's that process of being sanctified, right? The yes. Sanctification. Salvation is outworking yeah, like in I'm, those areas. I'm righteous and justified already in my spirit, but yep. I'm being sanctified yep. along the way, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So I'm being introduced to the wholeness of the work of Christ done in my spirit. Mm. And um, so we have the the emotional tank, the mental tank uh, that, you know, we need to pay attention to. And there is these early warning signs and signals that mm. uh, if we don't pay attention to and if we're living out of the vapour, like I literally drive my car <laughs> to vapor. the smell. It was you know, the engine's <laughs> yeah. trying to pull the vapour out just to just try and keep... the scent of fuel is keeping it going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're not... Uh, aware of the signs mm. um, and you're going to continue to push, 
you will survive to a degree in your 20s and maybe in your 30s, depending on how far you've pushed yourself. But late 30s, 40s, it usually manifests. And so some of those signs, some of those low fuel signs are you can start to get brain fog. And uh, it's a common one where you you can't concentrate as well as you used to. Mm. Um, Things aren't as clear in your thinking as they used to be. Um, You start to become irritable. Your tolerance levels Mm. are low. Wow. You're, you know, you're, you're barking at your, your wife and your children um, where you, you're normally compassionate and patient. You've just lost that. And so you're smiling because we've all been there <laughs> I've and done been that. There, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been in brain fog. I've been in low tolerance. So I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing you. <laughs> yeah. And look, you know, you, 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 your sleep patterns change. Mm. Your motivation for life starts to taper down. Things that you normally would wake up and do, I'm not talking about just going to work during the day, but things you love to do, you no longer have a a drive for. You don't want to go to the gym. You don't want to surf. You don't want to go for that beach walk. You don't want to walk the dog. Um, It seems like, oh, they're just simple, but these are indicators something's wrong. The disciplines that you once had that regulated your life, you no longer want to engage in. And so... These are some of the early warning signs. And so Mm. like me driving the car, if you don't pay attention to them, the engine's going to stop and uh, you're going to have to go into deep therapy to get out of that, been there and done that, um, (laughs) that area. Far better to fuel up along the way, right? (laughs) Wow. That's really insightful, hey, really insightful. I think we can... I mean, there's a whole whole list of things you can go through, but, you know, I mean, if... Once we become more self-aware and you sit, you know, once you create space for you to sit, be still Mm. and listen to yourself and become self-aware, you Mm. can pick up on this stuff and you can go, look, hey, this is something that I'm struggling with right now. I'm aware of it and I need to address it. And so if you don't put fuel into your emotions, into your mind, Mm. um, somewhere along the track, your soul's going to start to shake and the tremors are a sign that something's ready to break. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's so good. Thank you for sharing that. That's, um, yeah, that's really, really good. Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So we've, we've talked about, um, you know, burning out, what that looks like. We've talked about some of the red flags. Yep. Um, how would you describe <clears throat> the heart of our father towards us, his kids? How would I describe? And his, inv- his, his invitation to us, to yeah. that full, that tank filled up kind of life. Yeah, wow. Wow, I love that question. Um, let's backtrack to Jesus' primary assignment. Mm. Jesus came to reveal the Father mm. so that humanity could be drawn away from the thief mm. and could enter into family life. In John 10, he says this, the thief comes to rob, kill, steal and destroy, but I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Um, We've been kind of primarily taught that the thief is Satan, but in Mm. the context of what he's teaching there, Mm. he's talking about religious leaders, religious instruction, and he's talking about the law. And what he's saying is this, that the thief is the law. The thief is religion. Oh, wow. And so we know that the law was a system that was a temporary system that was put in place, but it wasn't God's first choice. Mm. Because if you trace back in the book of Exodus 19, you'll see that, you know, Israel come out as slaves, but God's intention is for them to become sons Mm. because he addresses them for the first time as a father. He says, "I, I, I wanted to draw you to myself as my children, mm. the language of yeah. a father to a children, they resist it because it's foreign to them. God is calling out the son in them, but the slave is stronger wow. than the son. Okay. And so these guys know burnout. <laughs> these guys know a lack of self-care and the nurturing hand of the father's drawing out the son in the slave. And so yeah, God then hears their rejection, says, well, Moses, you got to lead them. So here are... Here are Ten Commandments. Here are laws that I'll put in place, but it's a temporary thing. But you can trace from Genesis right through to the coming of Christ 
the intent of God to have a family in the earth, Mm. the intent of God to be known as a father. So Jesus' mandate was to reveal the father, to draw humankind or mankind away from the thief, the law, systems, principles that were secondary, Mm. and to bring us into this organic life-giving context or the operating system is that of family. Mm. And that's where... Wow. Where um, the gospel of the church or religious church has kind of um, masked or veiled the gospel of the kingdom. And God is bring, bringing back the gospel of the kingdom. That's Jesus' uh, message. It's his yep. language. Yep. Um, and when we look at the primary foundations for the gospel of the kingdom, it's family. Mm. And so the language of Jesus in the book of John is beautiful where from John 5 and 6 and John 17, he talks and relates to this God, Yahweh, mm. no longer as God and Yahweh but as Father. Yeah. And you got to understand so for the listeners of that time, it's a foreign language. Mm. And the kingdom language has got to become familiar language yeah. to every church. Yeah. It needs to be a language that we as teachers, as leaders, as counsellors, as people reintroduce to this world. It's not just a language for the church, it's a language for the world wow. that Jesus came to reveal the greatest thing he could reveal as a father. And, you know, so the language good. of the father through Jesus is this, John three sixteen, mm. for God so loved the world that he gave a son yep. so that he could have sons. Yeah, And I love it. I love yeah. that about the, the kingdom language. And so the invitation is John 10, yep. I came that you might have life. Mm. So how is life fully experienced in a family. Mm. Wow. And so we've so got to be leading people not just to God and what the name of God means, that's important, but to him as father. Because as we grow in our understanding of him being a father, we will grow in our identity as sons and will not walk as religious Christians upholding our labels, but we'll walk as kingdom sons of God in the so earth, um, knowing who we are, knowing whose we are, yeah. and uh, we're here representing our Father. And wow. so That's I so think good. God is upgrading our language, our understanding to that of the kingdom. Mm. And so, you know, your question is is loaded and it's loaded with levels, but that in a nutshell is life cannot fully uh, be experienced apart from you understanding you are first and foremost a son and daughter mm. and then he is your father. So I think, you know, I was raised in a charismatic kind of circle and I yeah. thank God for many treasures I learned, but I wasn't kind of taught about the fathering heart of God yeah. and I was taught, taught about reaching a destiny, mm. driven to that yeah. destiny, that goal, yeah. having a big ministry, getting popular, yeah. um, you know, reaching the nations for Jesus and so to me, I would have, you know, wow. 15 years ago answered that question by, you know, coming from that angle, saying that success or really living life is being victorious, you know, arriving at the mountaintop. And <laughs> according to my doctrine of that day, staying at the mountaintop, mm. but not understanding that, wow. you know, there are ebbs and flows in our life. Life is made up of ebbs and flows yeah. and valleys are more important than mountaintops. Um, but I can be now content with myself and with my surroundings in a valley uh, where it's pretty uh, wilderness-driven, but I can be content because Mm. I've unpacked the reality that he's as much a father and I'm as much living an abundant life in that valley as I am on the mountaintop. Mm. It doesn't change. Paul Paul said I learned to be content in all things. Mm. And so maybe for some of the listeners out there, you might not feel like you're at that mountaintop. You know, maybe you're driven by perfectionism and performance. Uh, once you get baptised into the family of God and you understand your position as a son and a daughter of God, that performance-driven mindset will be strangled out of you because mm. once the leaven of the kingdom starts to be born in you, it strangles all humanistic mindsets and religion. It, it, it just... It deals with it. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's yeah. the only way I can say. Once the leaven of the kingdom's in there, it influences yeah. you. Yeah, wow. Pretty cool, hey? Yeah, that's very cool. And so, you know, when you put it like that, and, you know, I think about my kids, 
um, as a father, I want them to be, you know, taking care of themselves and, yeah. and, and focusing on all the great opportunities in their life and looking after. So I guess if we can start to see ourselves as in that way, more so as son and, and, and our father wants us to be, Love it. You know, when, we, when we're engaging in fun, for instance, which yep. is good for the soul and the yep. mind and the emotions. You that, love that. I love that. <laughs> I love that. That we can see that, hey, our Father is, is, is rejoicing in that. Like he's, he's actually with us in the fun, right? I love it. He's, he's with us in the rest. I love that. He's with us in the fun. Yeah. He's with us in the rest. He's with us in the recharge. Yeah. That might look different to praying or whatever. It, it's not that we yeah. don't do those things, but it's like he's part of all of it. Because he wants to give us that fuller yeah. life, that abundant life. Yeah. Um, that itself is precious and needs to be thought about, dwelt yeah. on. <laughs> and I hear that. I hear that in what you're saying. Right. You know? um, and yet, and I'll put my hand up to say, yeah, it's so easy to be um, in that mindset of being driven to achieve or driven to, be, to, to get things perfect or to, you know, like yeah. it's, it's easy to fall back into that. It is. Um, and so... You know, this is a call to us, isn't it? Yeah. It's a call to, res we need to respond to this invitation. You were talking earlier about the significance of the chemicals in our brain and how, you know, a lack of or yeah. too much of one or not enough of the other can actually really impact our emotional state and how we feel and how we're doing in our soul or how we feel about life or about ourselves or can you just um, share a bit more about that because that was fascinating. Yeah, I suppose one uh, chemical or hormone that the body transmits is dopamine mm. and, uh, you know, you've got um, uh, various ways of having a dopamine fix um, <laughs> through food. Right. Uh, uh, when you're married, <laughs> sex is, 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 is a way of activating dopamine. It's part of a God-given gift, uh, exercise, anything related to a, a fun experience mm -hmm. for those who get out and walk, pick flowers, prune the trees, mow the lawns, but they enjoy doing it, dopamine starts to rise. Yeah. Now, um, dopamine is something that kids have or they're loaded with. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, when they're anticipating Christmas, Mm. dopamine levels start to rise in them, you know. And that's one thing like so dopamine and endorphins kind of work hand in hand. So, you know, pre-Christmas your kids are uh, the, having dopamine hits and endorphin hits. So the endorphins, uh, you know, anything you're anticipating and expecting uh, with excitement, mm. it, it rises the endorphin right. levels. So, so goals, goals, purpose. Yeah. So when you're depressed, you lose those things, and so you to look forward to. yeah, yeah your yeah. endorphins start to um, deplete. Right. Like my endorphins were so depleted during that three three year period. When the endorphins are rise in us, it helps to regulate your mood. It helps to regulate uh, your stress levels. It helps to boost self confidence. Yeah. Um, wow. And these are things I didn't know about. You know, yeah. like uh, when you have eat dark chocolate, mm. glass of wine, endorphins rise. Um, you know, good food, uh, being in an environment uh, where there's oxytocin and, uh, you know, another hormone where you're fellowshipping with people, you're having laughter, yeah, yeah. you know, dopamine, endorphins, oxytocin uh, are, are rising. Oxytocin, you know, when a, when a mother gives birth to a child, oxytocin starts to regulate her in her body. She's nursing with the, the child. Um, you know, these are some of the chemicals. For me, my serotonin levels were so low and serotonin is regulated from your gut. So one of the things I had to, because serotonin is, is a primary for good moods or bad moods. If you've got low level serotonin, you, you know, your mood's going to be dark yeah. and it's hard for you to, to get positive about life. Mm. So one of the things I had to do, because I was about 96 kilograms, I started to lose weight and I started to regulate my diet better. And as I started to eat healthy foods, living foods, um, the serotonin levels started wow. to um, increase in my, in my life. Exercise, they started, all of these hormones started to increase. Another, another thing is, you know, melatonin, um, you know, as it starts to get dark at night, we start to get sleepy because the melatonin mm -hmm. levels are rising in us. Yeah. And sometimes we, we're burning the candle too long. Mm -hmm. uh, social media too late at night, it's not yeah. you know, that blue light. Um, <laughs> it starts to wake you up when your body's trying to tell you, hey, you need to regulate now towards sleep. 
um, and we stay up too late. So that was the big thing for me. I had to then train myself to get into bed, you know, around 10.30 at night because I was like 1 or 2 a.m. Right. Um, and so, you know, <laughs> sleep is huge to yeah. help yeah. Uh, releasing a balanced life, uh, you know, or to, to increase good hormones in your, in your body. Wow, so good, man. Well, thank you so much for sharing Pleasure. everything that you've shared today. I'm sure that you've been so blessed. If you're watching today, I know I've been so blessed and um, so much to take away. I'm going to be listening back to this again and writing notes because I was busy listening, but I, I, I need to take a lot more away. And uh, it was huge. So much in there. So thank you so much, Pete. Thank you. Really appreciate it. And um, as we finish up, would you just pray for us and pray for everyone who's sure. watching? Love and, to. Uh, that would be so good. Yeah. All right. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Lord. Thank yeah, you, Father, we just want to thank you and honour you for the session that we've just had. Thank you, thank you, Lord God, for all that's been unloaded and unpacked. Yes. I pray, Father, for everyone listening, this yes. one thing, that each of us would grasp a deeper understanding that we are first and foremost sons and mm. daughters of yes. you as our Father, yes. that the life that you've called each one of us listening to live cannot be fully expressed apart from mm. doing life as family of God. Yes. And Lord, I pray and ask that anyone listening to the sound of my voice, watching this episode now, that's struggling in life, Lord, let the light go on in them now. Let them know that it's not the end, but yes, maybe God. the beginning of something new in their life. Lord, even as I went through those three years of complete darkness, it wasn't the end. It was the beginning of you recalibrating my life you, to send me in a whole new trajectory. Lord, I pray your peace, I pray your love and your hope mm. to flood everybody under yes. the sound of my voice yes. today. We love you, Reality Church, Dan and Brooke, leaders. We bless you and I'm privileged and honoured to be here today, Father. And we thank you and honour you that you who have begun a good work, you'll continue it mm. until the day of Jesus. And so thank you, bless you, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you so much. Pete, thank you again for being here. Thanks, Reality. Bless you guys. Yeah. And man, yeah. it's been real. Boom. So good. Thanks a lot. Wow, what an incredible interview that we just had this morning. And I just want to thank Pete very much for his time and for the wisdom and insight that he was able to shed on such a, an important subject. Um, you know, God, God wants all of us to be living in that full health and to take care of ourselves because in order to minister out his purposes, in order to live out our kingdom identity, it's important that we do that from a, a healthy place. So thank you so much again, Pete. Um, that was incredibly, incredibly helpful. And next week, we are back in the building and we have Pastor Brooke bringing the word. So it's going to be an incredible morning at uh, 7 Lumsden Road, Wangara. So if you haven't joined us before, I just want to invite you, come along. Um, it'll just be such a privilege to have you join us then. And that's it for another Church Online. I know time flies when you're having fun, but don't despair because church is so much bigger than a Sunday morning. We have this incredible array of life groups running all throughout the week, and I'd encourage you to get along to one of them if you're not already. And if you aren't, but you want to know a little bit more about them, there's going to be a link that pops up right now that you can follow, and it's going to tell you everything that you need to know. Have a great rest of the week. We love you guys, and we'll see you next time.